Oh, the arena are going to make some noise, not just for the game, but for Henry G and Anders as well. I know. And I promise you, this one's going to be an absolute barn burner. Two ravenous teams looking to prove themselves on the world stage. Prepare to lock horns here in the capital of Counter-Strike. Copenhagen, this quarterfinal belongs to you. Please join us and give us everything you've got. Anders Boom, take us into the action. Well, it's not going to wait any longer, Henry. We're ready to go, and it looks like Navi, starting on the T side, are ready to hit this speed bomb site hard and fast. Two people defending that grenade. It's going to go a little bit, but it's not enough here. The Dawleys come into play. Headshots across the board. The Turks are answering back. Wakadia, two big kills, and it's up to Alexi and Imma. The fan has crumbled here for Na'Vi. They're not in the round like they wanted to be. At least they're going to need a bomb plant here, but it's already been slowed down. And coming back into this one will not be easy. Madjo with the headshot, all on the hands of Ima, locked in the corner and taken down. Eternal fire, they win the pistol and they're off to a nice start. A comprehensive B bomb site hold there, and there's no problem whatsoever. No bomb plant coming through, barely any frags there for Na'Vi. Eternal Fire put their best foot forward here in the quarterfinal. It's Mirage, it's a, not a B rush, but a B execution. See that single smoke down towards short window as well, but Madja holds strong. The fortress of the B bomb strike is not penetrated whatsoever. And now, begs a question, do we see any investment in the second round, Na'Vi? Full eco here, a chance to farm some serious cash on the Turkish side. Zantara is aggressive, of course, as he throws the initial utility towards top and middle. It's going to be another B-side finish for the looks of things here. A bomb being planted would be a dream scenario for Na'Vi, but it's very, very unlikely. Especially with this dynamic setup in the middle. Three people here for Eternal Fire. They can go anywhere. You try and pop out of the palace of the A-bomb side, they're going to be able to run up connector very fast. And if you go towards B, where did you look like they kind of are leaning that way? You could tell Wakadia, the youngest player still left in the major here. He's going to be able to rotate back, and he already is. Madja with the grenade. Oh, sends it flying. Oh, that oh. is devastating. Yeah, well, you might as well get in there now, boys. 150 damage inflicted as Antares. He's bringing in that flank as well. He's looking to farm the money with the MP9. This could oh. be disastrous. A ton of money available for him. Can he convert? He's ready for it. A little bit of a burst back for more. He's making so much money in this round. Three kills already. We'll pull out the USP and some backup is being called for. So I doubt they're even going to be able to save much of anything. A good dink on to Bacardi, but they can draw him back. Well done on Santaros. You'll take that. Yeah, he farms himself a cheeky $1,800 there. And now. Poor old JL, not really much to do, not another kill found, it was the full eco, but another quick and concise victory there for Eternal Fire, dropping one single player, actually might help them out a little bit, they talked about it on the desk, we need Woxic to get the AWP nice and early here, with that found money, they might be able to bring it out in this first gun round and have a serious advantage here on Mirage. Big topic of conversation with Woxic. Yeah, Those early there it is. rounds, how can he get going? So it's actually pretty good that you had one player go down there, enables the AWP, the money's nice and strong here, they're up against the AK-47s, what kind of stance are Eternal Fire going to present? Smoke down towards Windows, Antares though, full send, top of mid, wants to set the tone for this half. Doesn't want to allow Na'Vi to get comfortable whatsoever, as we do see. They're setting up for an execution here, Anders, four players this side of the map, smokes are already down, who will frag first? It's going to be Kalix, but look at Na'Vi. They want to go hard and fast. They're setting a pace at the start of this game. They want to catch Eternal Fire on the wrong foot here at the beginning. And at least they're going to get the bomb plan this time. Wonderful drop, very, very low. I think that was the Molotov that managed to burn him down. But it is still going to be a four versus four. And look who's creeping down through the middle. Imma, a little bit late to the party, but maybe it's timed just absolutely perfectly. That smoke has blocked him off, but it doesn't matter. No one's nailed clear defusing yet. No one can even get close to the bomb side at the moment. And Imma shooting Ricardi in the back of Eternal Fire. They might have to save this round. I think you might be onto something here. The AWP of Woxic and Majab, who's currently on four and zero, have to yield, they have to give in. The execution proves to be too strong. They are locked out of the A bomb side, and it's the first round for Na'Vi. Posting their first nice and quickly here on the T side campaign. 
Boom goes the dynamite. Three players survive as well. Money should be okay now for Eternal Fire with the saved AWP. But uh, they was locked out, Anders. There's nothing they could do whatsoever. No one could break through the initial smokes and couldn't find the frags. And they had that initial kill as well, Kalix. Yes. Takes the first frag, but nice flank coming in from him and made things very uncomfortable and wonderful, managing to make that AK-47 sing on the A-bomb site. So, the buy comes through. Pretty decent for Eternal Fire, and we'll see where Brucardia and his aggression will be. Finally opening kill once again here, pushing up towards the top of middle. Oh, he's been given a little bit of attraction here, shooting through the smoke. I mean, someone could be tempted to wide swing that when they hear the bullets coming through, but it doesn't seem like that's the case at the moment. Navi. Hanging out a little bit at the top of mid. Oh, well, maybe not, not the grenade that he was looking for. It's fine. It's fine. It's early on here. Great news for Navi proving to themselves early in the half that they're able to take that A-bomb side without this running into too much trouble. A real test here. You can see Ricard is going to be baited in by Zantares. It's a lovely setup. They can pull this one off. They're onto something. He'll take the initial aggro. Needs a double kill now. Looking for the hat trick. He'll maintain somewhat of an advantage. One minute remaining, it's a three versus three. Bombs tucked away towards short, and now it's going to be poor Magic at the back of the B bomb site, isolated. Woxic rotating in towards the window, but his in-game lead has gone down. B side open, it's down to the Turkish sniper. It's a really big issue. Kalik's going to get picked off on the other side, and there's plenty of time left here. Woxic, all right, that's a good shot, but the bomb is going to get planted on the other side, and there is nothing that he could do about it. If he was to run for it right now, I mean, it would be, uh, it'd be an insane clutch at the start of the game, but also he's risking a lot of money and he's already made the choice, staying far, far away. It's a shame that Maggio went down because that was the deciding difference. That was, that's really op what opened up the round here for Na'Vi. So they're going to be tying up the game very, very early on here. Na'Vi not flustered at all losing the pistol. They look like they're locked in at the moment. Absolutely true. And Eternal Fire only receiving 1900 dollars in terms of loss bonus entering this next round it's going to be very difficult to do much with this AWP it's kind of full eco territory we've got the caveat the AWP you can win this round technically we don't want to invest too much we'll see what they have at their sleeve Lucardia will have $1,200 residual but we are all tied up at 2-2 nice round for Navi once again that B split taking down the two-man set up towards short as well looked like they baited in Lucardia perfectly gets the double kill needed three though to really seal the deal this might be the first tactical timeout required. Just considering the, the financial situation, you can see how effective the bait and switch was there towards Shaw, but wonderful takes him down. And then that very important frag towards Madger as well. Kalix had no idea that Imo was holding the extremities. And as mentioned, has to be the eco around the AWP. Walks it will have the AWP and a Molotov, but that is about here. They'll keep the money at $2,000. There is a slight chance they can win this round, but he would have to go absolutely massive. It's in the center of the map, so he can pretty much go wherever he wants. But it looks like another really fast execute. Very similar to us last time. Flashbang on the ramp. They're setting up the wall of smokes towards the jungle. Going to be a boost on the other side. Maybe get a kill with this one. Oh, no. They did fail it a little bit there. That's a shame because if they'd gone down that one correctly, they could have had the early kill. I don't think they would have won the round, but at least you do a little bit of damage. And this is another round for Na'Vi, no question about it. Yeah, three in a row, Anders are looking very comfortable out there. The AWP doesn't have really any impact whatsoever. No damage inflicted to the Na'Vi outfit. So objective here for Eternal Fire, just hold on to the sniper. Money will be okay going forward. They get $2,400. Means a pretty reasonable buy. You see Calix with the, the Zeus up and towards the B apartments here. No one should go hunting. There's no real reason to. And five players surviving for Na'Vi, three rounds in a row, their money's going to be very strong going forward. And there we have it. Very clean and concise round. Magic the only player to go down, but the AWP is brought over to the following rounds here. Alexi B looking very com comfortable and confident with the calls. Lots of set pieces here, keeping the five-man unit together and trading at those kills. We haven't seen that many rounds, but the truth is they've already hit almost the entire map and they found success almost everywhere, Navi. That's a big problem for Eternal Fire. There's no real backbone that they can re rely on right now, saying, you know what, at the very least, we're always winning that mid-fight or we're good at controlling the A-ramp like this. There's not a lot to fall back on at the moment. That's an issue, and that's something that they're going to have to make up for here because Alexi is a great in-game leader. If you let him lose like this, if he has every 
pathway on the map open to him, he's going to tear you apart. Well, the rounds have been winning. There hasn't been much pushback whatsoever. We'll see whether this buy is going to have something to say about his onslaught of executions. We've got a couple of M4s in the mix here. WP, of course, saving the previous round. It's actually pretty reasonable. Zontaris with no utility. I guess that is quite an issue. Walk 6 to a 3,900. Very important round here. Navi hunting for their fourth in a row. It's another pocket Stratlander. There's four players heading towards the apartment at the start of the round. No defaults here. Looking to get stuck in. It's bits at the tip of the spear as Magic has no idea. He'll be going down, but no, finds the flick and the opening frag. I thought maybe, just maybe, Magic heard the burn damage, but he clearly didn't. He was just very quick to react. Crazy. Oh, he gets away with the opening kill. They needed that. They needed someone to go their way. It's about time. They are on the more favored side, Eternal Fire. They do not want to go down early here. You need to win the majority of the round. You need to get into the second half without Na'Vi feeling too good about themselves. And I do like this. You could see the adjustment as well because they're worried about that same A execute. So now they're moving Kalix into that shadow position. So try and stop Na'Vi, although it's not going to be Santaris. Ima takes him down. Santaris is really yet to get going here. Yeah. Quite deep in this first half. And yeah, he just rolls over towards that window position. Back to a four and four we go. 45 seconds. Woxic, big miss towards the connector. Difficult shot. And now Wakadi to be tested. Emma fumbles the jump towards window. Might be a blessing in disguise. As we're going into a B split once again. It oh, has no. been a difficult position for Magic to hold on to. Smoke down towards the van. Flashing short. He's under a lot of pressure as Navi flooding towards the bomb site now. Reduced to hiding inside of the smoke, but he will get the headshot. Take down JL's no. wonderful. Fighting back left and right, and he just dips into the smoke and escapes the AWP. Still 15 seconds left. Where is that bomb plant coming through? Finally, it's happening. And Immer on the flank here. This could be the round winning kill, and he's not going to hesitate. We'll take down Waxik. Alex, if his teammates were alive, this would be a sick flank at the late end of the round, but it's not going to make a difference now. He's already been spotted. The grenade, not enough to kill. Wonderful, yeah. and that means he has to back on out. Navi picking up another round. It was always going to be a difficult round for Eternal Fire. They were missing some key pieces of utility. They didn't have a diffuse kit on Kalix here. Two versus one, certainly within his wheelhouse, but just out of position, no opportunities to take here, and that's unfortunate. Eternal Fire with that massive opening frag from in-game leader Maja. Arguably shouldn't have picked it up, but he did. It was a nice clean five on four, but they couldn't hold on. Torn limb by limb by Na'Vi here. Two players survive. The lost bonus done to accumulate as they start posting a ton of rounds in a row here. It's going to be four clean for Na'Vi. And yeah, a notably absent Zantares so far. Yeah, but what's really remarkable is so many of these rounds right now have been basically constructed by Wonderful, just getting insane kills with the AK left and right. Now he's picked up the AWP, but the way that he's going, you almost wish he would just keep playing with the AK because he's been very, very proficient so far in the game. It's true. Top fragging. A bit yet to even find a kill. None okay. of them available. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. And we are going to see a half buy here from Eternal Fire. Getting a bit desperate out there now. MP9s and a Desert Eagle. A couple of M4s in the mix. That's for Woxic and Kalix. Adger at the top of Wicardia. And well, he's been taken down once again, starting to get bullied on this side of the map. It's a wide open B bomb site. Probably round already, unless Alex can rotate in and do something unthinkable. It's not going to happen. Bit's starting to show some form of double kill to get off the mark here in the quarterfinal. And that's it. Nothing really more can be done. The bomb's going to rotate through the apartment itself. And Alexi B hold the extremities up the map, ensuring that no eternal fire players can consider this retake. That's a horror show around for eternal fire because the one thing that you could maybe hope for is that, okay, maybe players like Alexi and Bit and maybe even JL are having a bit of a slow start and it's just some of the players on Navi are good. But then you see Bit show up in a round like that. That was so crisp. That makes you think, oh God, it's not that they're coming into this one cold with some of their players. They just haven't had a chance because wonderful and <laughs> yeah, have been taking all the kills. It's true. That was a statement round from Bit. Just to be called him out, he hits two absolute bangers. Single-handedly wins the round there. Five in a row. Maximum loss bonus, at least for Eternal Fire. That's $3,400 per player. They'll save an M4 and an MP9. 
The AWP is available for walk sake. He can drop a weapon over to Madjad. He's having a rough time now in that B bomb site. I think moving the AWP in towards B might be the call for walk sake into this next round. I think it has to be. It's a good idea because it will also give them some more defense towards the middle. You can sort of be more easily justify having that mid or that, that second B player. Look at this. Moving the catwalk. Yeah. Ooh. This is unbelievably crisp. Even this kill doesn't take a lot. A little burst of bullets coming out and Bit basically wins the round with those two kills. A 5 to 2 scoreline as we lead into round number 8. And Navi are running away with this opening map here. Eternal Fire yet to really get stuck in. Four players towards the apartments once again. Now I've got Alexi B just patrolling middle, trying to get a bit of information. Woxic will open things up. That's an opening frag. Can't hold on to the advantage once again. Zantara seems like he's forcing the issue time and time again and being punished. Down he goes with nothing. This B bomb side to be tested once more. Magia, same smoke down. Flashbang to try and find some time and space as the rotations come through with Cardia. Nice dink, even better from Bits. His reply was beautiful. That should have been Wakadia winning that fight every single time, but instead they just pick apart the defense. Madja, he's being pushed forward. They're all waiting for him. He's dead immediately, and it's just Kalix left. Yeah, there's nothing reason to even go to the bomb side. Navi, even though they're really almost at the bomb side, they slow it down. They allow for the rest of Eternal Fire to get there. They even catch Kalix with a smoke at the end. This 4-1 setup is pretty brutal. You've got Alexi B, in-game leader, top of middle, giving all the information over that aggression's coming in. Uh, Santares goes down with absolutely nothing once again. I think he's playing a, a frustrating game at this stage. His teammates are begging him just to reel it in. Hold with the, the crossfires, because they get the opening frag once more, then he goes down for nothing. What a tough position for Santares to be in, because if you have the kind of you know, aura around you that he has, like he is... He's supposed to be the big game player here. You almost have to try and play into it. Like, I'm sure he is forcing it in some ways. Might have come into the game with a feeling that, you know, I'm going to be the one that's going to make the difference here and really bring down Navi. It's not been possible so far. 10 and 2 for Wonderful. Imer up there as well with six kills. But you see, whenever any of the other Navi players get a chance, they look very, very crisp, mechanically looking very, very solid here. Eternal Fire in a lot of trouble already. Six rounds in a row. The hype of this matchup starting to deflate here. The CT side is looking weak. Alexi B has got them eating out of the palm of his hand right here. The money is fantastic. That won't be an issue for the remainder of their T side campaign. JL looks like Magis had to be taken out of the B bomb site. And he goes down to low HP, but actually finds the kill. So they've tagged him up, they changed his stance. It's What's a partial that? investment, and it's the opening frag once again for Eternal Fire. Can they capitalize? They've got themselves a second rifle here. Yeah, but the time that it's taking to pick those up, giving a lot of mid control for Navi, which they are pretty swiftly converting into what looks like a bit of a B pincer coming in. Im has been such a nuisance in this connected position. Constantly a thorn in their side and continues to find frag after frag. This time taking down Woxit, but not for long. It's going to be Kalex maintaining the advantage. Can they break the streak of six rounds here as Navi once again try their luck at the B bomb site? A nice boost for Zantara has yet to get going since the pistol round. 50 seconds remaining. They, they kind of have to commit to this, Anders, and we'll see if Bits can crack things open once again. Finds Matcher. Will they detect Zantara on the other side? But he has to give up his position, so it's no longer a real surprise, and he can't land the eagle shot. Bit with one more cracking headshot to enter the B bomb site with. And Kalix, again, you don't have a kit, you don't have any of the grenades. As cool as it would be to run across the map and try and clutch this one, the odds are not in your favor. So many opportunities, so many opening picks, and they're just not being converted here. They even have the stack and the B bomb site, they are ready for it. It's the place that keeps getting tested round after round here. A change of setup, an opening frag from Maja, a scavenged rifle, and the B stack still not enough here. It's going to be seven rounds in a row for Navi. Time is of the essence here for Eternal Fire. It started off so well, such a convincing pistol victory. Really set the tone for the game, but star players not showing up. Woxic three on three on what is commonly referred to as an Orpus Paradise. Mirage should be farming here. Santaras as well, similar issues. Seems like he's frustrated and forcing these fights time and time again. He's just not winning them. And I guarantee you, with the adrenaline pumping, 
These rounds are flying by for Eternal Fire. They're going to look at the scoreboard and they're going to think, I can't believe it. How are we already down this much? We've barely even got the quarterfinals started. And it's a 7 to 2 scoreline. Leading us in round number 10. Oh, oh God, that's JL See ya. helping out with Immer in the middle and they just explode, Warsick. Not a chance. Oh, my days. Finally, is an opening frag for Na'Vi. Surely a death sentence here. And an airstrike for Wicardia. Second kill found, five on three. It's a double orb setup, but it's going even worse. Maja clutches the sniper, but all of his teammates have gone down here with absolutely nothing going in their favor. It's going to be a frag, surely. Dantares makes his position known. He's locked in. Like, he's locked in four different ways. Because Bit has already taken the bomb side behind him. He got that kill coming out of the palace. And now, what's oh, nothing oh, to do? Oh, Another oh. airstrike, Henry. This time, Santara is the victim, and it's just Magia left. Oh, that absolutely no chance. My God. They're trying absolutely everything here. You've got to give it to Eternal Fire. They're adjusting the setup, the formation. This time, the double orb setup. But we've got to see that shot from JL at the start of the round. Absolutely close lines. Walks in to kick things off as Magia fights for his life now. All he can really do is hold on to the AWP. It looks like he's good to do so. I assume he hits this shot on bit. And now in a one versus two, uh, but no chance of winning the round, of course. And they're going for the hunt here. Immer's low HP doesn't matter too much. And he should have this frag. Magic doing a great job of staying alive here. Padding the stats. Oh, wow. He actually does it, Anders. Not bad at all. A great sequence. But doesn't really mean too much, apart from he saves the AWP. Money not a factor on the Na'Vi side. But he is leading by example. Top fragging now for Eternal Fire. I need every, every other player to step up at this stage. Here's, this is the issue. It's actually providing an extreme contrast. Why is Madger, the senior player on the team, yeah, he's got all the veterans here, but he's not supposed to be the star player. He is showing up. He is ready for this quarterfinal. Where is the rest of the squad right now? Well, analysts were talking about it. Like, he's overperformed in the elimination stage. In fact, he has had so many great performances, it didn't seem sustainable going into the quarterfinals. He's still turning up. He's still delivering. Where is Santares when you need him? Challenge again towards the connector. Smoked off. Vision removed. He's going to pop the smoke open, but gets Oops. nothing for him. Yeah, I think that smoke even falls a little bit too short, so might give some space. Ima looking to see if he can find somebody. Definitely knows that Bacardi is in there. My God, the captain of the team showing up, leading by example. You need somebody else here. Santara is definitely one of the big candidates. Five kills so far. Need to quickly double that. They need at a minimum to win the last two rounds here. Make it an 8-4 scoreline. And even that's not going to be that amazing, but it's something to work with. Well, they saved the AWP in the previous round, courtesy of Magia. This smoke. See whether that's going to be a, a factor here. They're hoping to smoke the connector itself so they can cross up. For now, though, it's going to be Emma fighting back. Alexi B calls for the A execution. 30 seconds. Kalex, we need a rock solid defense here. We'll see if he can deliver. Oh, so many of them. Jail with a team kill, but might not even make a difference at this point. Two of them towards CT spawn as the bomb is getting planted. 20 seconds on the clock, and they're not going to be able to stop it here. Santaris, bit of a jump to try and bait out the shot, but now wonderful is in position. Molotov coming out, and actually they're putting some pressure. Oh! On the we'll find the shot. Santaris had him locked in the corner and low on health, but at the end of the day, it'll make no difference whatsoever. Navi on nine rounds, wiping out Eternal Fire in this opening map. The flame starting to diminish here in the quarterfinal. Where is Eternal Fire? They've won the pistol, the second follow-up anti-eco, but since then it's been nothing but one-way traffic. Alexi B dominates a connector once again, even with a team frag. It's wonderful. Taking down Zantaris, who's again forcing the issue, hoping to convert the little damage he did. It doesn't happen. He's inside his own head, and Wicardia hits the deck. As another opening kill from Wonderful, make it a double. Removes Antares once again. Five on three before we even get into the opening sectors of the round. They hardly even get to touch the ground in the middle before they're dead. He's lightning fast. They catch Alexi B a little bit off guard. Some Here we go. Just, here comes the return. Eternal fire. They get some kills going their way, but they also get that grenade. He's tanked up a little bit. 
And still, Na'Vi will take this kind of a trade. A three versus three, and a minute and 15 seconds on the clock. Jail selling the idea that they might be trying to hit this A-bomb side. It's deep smoke coming up. Oh, and the opening. He nearly gets Kallax the grenade. Nice he fades away. He's lucky to be alive. Well, towards the end of the pass we go. Oh, we wonderful in bits with the AWP in hand. C4's there as well. Woxic trying to take some territory, but JL seems to be unaware. Nice maneuver. Woxic gives the man an advantage. The final round of this first half. They need this third on the board. Bits going for the backstab in the B bomb side once again. Madge has been hunted here. Time and time again, he's cowering at the back of the site. MP9 in hand at the van. Obviously, a, a check position, and Bit is en route. As he sniffs things out here, if he finds his kill, the round might be done. He's definitely going to check it, Anders. Does he come out on top, though? Here we go! Madra! He's stepping up every single time they need him. He'll find the last one. And a 9-3 to three at the end of it. And almost all of the rounds, thanks to Madra, the captain of the team, doing whatever he can to make this work. Well, they'll take it. They pick up the first and final round of this first half, but it doesn't feel like nearly enough. On the CT side, they've got a lot of work to do now. Maybe some nerves. Just maybe a little bit out of their depth as well from a tactical POV. It looked like Alexi Bede has had them in his pockets. The majority of that first half, so many set pieces, so much punishment towards B and middle. Uh, this is the opening sequence of the round, and there's a double kill, but wonderful. Still wasn't quite enough. It's Na'Vi with nine, Eternal Fire with three after sealing that final round away. Uh, it goes without saying, it's a very important pistol round here. Eternal Fire, they've got themselves a couple of smokes, three flashbangs, and in terms of upgraded weaponry, we have a P250 in the hands of Zantarez. Hasn't turned up thus far, but it's never too late. If he can find something quite special here, all will be forgiven. They have to pick up this pistol. He'll head towards the palace position and needs to play like a king. It would be one hell of a comeback if they're going to be able to do it here. Let's see Eternal Fire set up to crack open the A-bomb site. Bits blind behind the smoke, just trying to land a headshot, but unable to connect with anything at the moment. Madger down below spotted. He's worried about getting jumped, and yeah, he's the he's kind of the linchpin here. He's supposed to be the late flank. He doesn't want to die early. Bomb looks like it's going to get planted. This is a brilliant start here for the Turkish side. They are well on their way to winning this round. Now, there is a Molotov, but... No diffuse kit in play in the round, so already time is on the essence here. They need this round. Eternal Fire getting a little bit of pushback now. Wonderful with a couple of shots, Madger. There's the late flank. That's all you need to do. Just stay alive now. They have to defuse that bomb, and it takes 10 seconds. A two versus three. And I think they've done enough here, Henry. I don't think they're going to be able to give this round back up again. <laughs> Alexi goes down. Kalix with a couple of good kills in Eternal Fire. The first sign of life for them. We said they needed it. And it's quite convincing in the end. Three players surviving. Nice flank from Maja. Continues his run of good form. Didn't say much about Zantaras in that sequence, but still. Bomb planted, execution successful. The retake not possible for Na'Vi there without the defuge kit. And I'm assuming they take the full eco here. No real reason to force into this particular round. We've got a Desert Eagle for Wonderful. Can't blame him. He's got 17 kills and five deaths thus far. Got to be a clean one for Eternal Fire, though. Need to make sure that they find the 2 0, the 9 5. XCP will tuck himself in towards the ladder room here. Bomb down, top of the middle. Let's be probing out the map, feeling things out. Andrew is showing a little bit of presence towards B. It's actually a bit of a stack here from Navi as well. The Zeus beneath the window. JL. Ready and waiting. Speaking of which, Alexi B, same weapon in towards ladder row. And this is the kind of round that could spiral. Well, they've got Woxic already in jungle, so he's confirmed that A is pretty much clear at this stage. Should be a done deal. Can't imagine a world where they no, give this one up. He's getting a bit worried because that is the AK that's leading in there, so I was thinking, if Alexei gets the Zeus kill on the AK, you never know what could happen. Centaurus, a bit dangerous. Oh! <laughs> Stunned by Alexei. And a headshot from Wonderful. Oh, not like this, boys. No, surely not. Woxic has got a little bit of a backstab going on. It's going to be a free kill on the first one. Wants to swing wide to get some more, but better be careful. That is the deagle back there. The bomb's being planted. Again, it should be Eternal Fire winning this one, even if Navi are 
making it, you know, a little bit of a roller coaster ride here. Nice work from Alexi B. He might be onto something here. Save the AK 47. Booster funds going forward here. Tunnel Fire will win the round, but certainly some frustrating frags going against them. It's Woxic. They're going to farm some extra cash here. Imma. He's got the Zeus still in hand. It's recharged. He's ready to go. Doesn't look like anyone is going to be exiting that way. And I like this, though. I mean, saving the AK is absolutely worth it. Pull it on over into the next round. Waving out the fight against the other AKs on the EF side. Okay. Well, a very important round coming up next. Money should be quite decent now for Na'Vi. With the save AK-47. Eternal Fire of winning both pistols at this stage. 2-0 on both halves. This is round three. It's where the wheels fell off on their CT side. It almost went horribly wrong here, but crisis averted. 9-5 to five as Eternal Fire starts to crawl their way back into the series. AK is pretty much across the board, apart from Woxing, he's saved Mac 10. It looks like Eternal Fire want to try and go for a similar executor to the one that Na'Vi were doing a couple of rounds there. Yeah, this is a, a pocket strat of the get-go. Execution, five players on this side of the map with Cardia, that's more like it. Opening frag, a pair of them found. It's now down to bit, MP9, and nothing he can do as he's ran down, round over. Eternal Fire on their feet as they keep their sheep very clean here. Five players alive and well. JL and Alexi B, no choice but to save their rifles here. Convincing from Eternal Fire. If you want to build a comeback, this is exactly how you would do it. That first buy round for Na'Vi, slap the rifles out of their hands, that's, get that A-bomb side. That's certainly the best sequence we've seen from Wakadia. Yes. We, this has happened before, though. You know, there are some games where it's the in-game leader, it's not the superstar that carries some of the early game, and it gives some time for some of the stars to really wake up. So hopefully, that's what we're seeing. Wakadia and Centaurus, yeah, a bit of a slow first half. But if you can get it into the game now, then who really cares? Oh, it's absolutely true. Nine to six. They'll be feeling themselves now. Ricardi can keep that up. Navi could be in a lot of trouble here. Two rifles saved, however. One's the AK, a FAMAS as well. Lost bonus done to accumulate. They'll be getting $2,900 into this round. So we'll see what kind of approach they go for. Looks to be a partial investment. Nine to six. Is that FAMAS and AK in the hands of JL? Coming on five kills, they've not have to do too much so far on their campaign of Mirage, but they would love it to really arrive. Going into round number 16 here, pushes off towards Shaw. Maja leads the way in towards this B bomb side. Pod flash, gaining some control. A little bit of damage inflicted towards Wonderful as well. But bear in mind, hasn't got any Kevlar, and you can see how squishy he is. And vulnerable to the grenades, down to just 29 points of health. So Jesse wants the orb going forward. Showing more and more B presence here. Madge is trying to keep it on that side of the map, and he'd be right in doing so. There's actually a bit of a three-man stack. Looking at the mini-map, it's a big giveaway, the bomb making its way this side of the map, so... Looks like we know where this is going to finish. Oh, they just rotated like out as well. <laughs> yeah. That is brutal. They have the stack ready and waiting. They rotate everyone out just as Eternal Fire are setting themselves up. And they're going to finish with this kind of grenade from Riccardi, even if it maybe was meant to go down below, it doesn't really matter. It's selling the idea. All of Na'Vi quite sure. Okay, we made a bit of a rotation this way. We're hearing the grenades. It looks like we've got the right idea. This round should really be done every single time. Yeah, you'd think so. That's it. They've confirmed the B-bomb side is wide open. They have short under lock and key. It's Riccardi. His position might be a question mark here. Could get dropped by bits, but he's uh, well aware of it. Perfect crosshair placement. And uh, that's round over. Eternal Fire running away with the second half. Nine Needs to be a, a T-sided affair here on Mirage these days. Oh, you could feel the energy was kind of leaving the arena a little bit because Navi were winning so much. But Eternal Fire had something to say about it. Wakadia started to wake up. That is the first part of the, part of the puzzle. But we're all still here in the Royal Arena waiting for Santaris. A lot of eyes going to be fixed on him. A 
big job to do here today. And so far, he's been slacking a little bit, but we'll see. There's still some time left for him to arrive on the main stage here in Copenhagen. A timeout's been called for Navi. Probably a good idea by now. Oh, yeah, certainly. This one's starting to spiral. We thought, okay, the pistol going against him shouldn't be a massive issue here, but Maj is calling an absolute blinder on the T side. Replicating the good form we saw from Alexi B. Lots of execution, lots of five-man plays. And it's working out perfectly. And the, the money's looking very healthy on that side of the server as well. They've got the walks at KWP. We're getting into the last stretches of it here. It's a nine to seven. Basaku Mahon! Yeah, let's go. This is going to be a little bit of a closer game than we were expecting, Henry. We're in the 17th round. An eternal fire still burning hot here towards the quarterfinals. JL getting shot in the foot, trying to get through. Yeah, he has to escape. He did not want to stay in the window even a second longer. And they look like they're doing another execute towards another. the bomb side. But this time, Navi, they have more players here. Another set piece, Anders. You're dead on. No defaults here, ladies and gentlemen. They're throwing the kitchen sink into the bomb side. The smokes are deployed. It's Emma taken out of position. They've got no vision on the choke points whatsoever. Everyone behind the utility. Emma trying to breach the smoke. Have some sort of impact here as Navi are left looking at six and seven. The first frag is available to them. Emma will just about pick it up by taking by Santares. Let's get Santares warmed up. He's been missing nine kills on him. Three versus three now. We'll look at JL. One grenade soaring through the sky, landing at the ticket booth right now, might give them the round. The wonderful has shown up. He's got 18 kills. He is leagues ahead of everybody else on the server at the moment. And you could see him slow wheeling that cannon ball, but he missed the timing. I think Kalis saw that, but he can't land it. He had the opportunity. He knew that wonderful was there, but he's just so quick on the other side. Santara is trying to walk out. This is a dangerous game. If you miss the timing, you don't know if the scope is at the corner. You could be dead instantly. But he takes a deep breath, takes a wide step out. Now he's in the open. Oh Shot in the back. And wonderful with it all to do still. One versus three here. Wakadia locked in up against the corner. He needs to land a couple of great shots. But it's wonderful. You look at that, Henry. Beautiful, powerful, wonderful. He's stepping up just when the even most ever denying the fire round streak for eternal fire. They had that round in their pocket. It was a done deal. The execution was perfect. The CTs were locked out. They didn't want to commit. They're waiting for the response to come through and the wheels fall off. Zantares couldn't find the kills in towards CT spawn. He gives wonderful an inch and he takes a mile as they get double digits. The first round posted by Na'Vi, it's 10 to seven. Him up. Finding some confidence here, AK-47 in hand. Looking to find the opening frag, but takes a heavy grenade on route, down to 58 points of health. And again, we're sending four players in towards the B apartment. Is it going to be the quick execution once again? Good incendiary from Alexi B. Buys himself some time for rotations if required. They've got full mid control here. Flashbang deployed. Plenty of time in the round. You can see it's Maja. Just showing some presence towards A, smokes off connector, throws a flash at the A round, but it's all a ruse. They're getting ready in towards B. If Alexi B jumps up, he'll get a lot more than he bargained for. There's the jump and the headshot delivered by Wagadia. What a stunning opening for JL. He might be able to do even more. He did so much damage. Santara is practically dead, but the bomb is being planted right now. Four versus four. And look at how far away Bit is in the bomb plant here. Madja. He is a rock star at the moment. 15 kills, taking down JL. And now they've pulled the plug on the round. They want to exit it. They want to save the rifles. Eternal fire up to eight. Okay, this game is warming up now. Yeah, Madge is absolutely killing it out there. A constant nuisance, always in the back lines. The backstabs are brutal. He's showing so much presence towards A as well with very precise utility, keeping them guessing. And Na'Vi, after breaking the streak, are back to misery. Three players will just have to save. Eternal Fire pull another one back. Alexi B, we said it, as soon as he jumps up, he needed the information, Anders. He needed to spot what yes. was going on, taken down quickly, and now it's a round over at that oh, stage. He got the information, all right. Oh, he certainly did. Yeah, we really have got a game on our hands now. This one's at a knife edge. Weapon saved 
for Na'Vi, of course, but they'll take the tactical timeout. Things done to spiral on their CT campaign. One round picked up thus far. Losing both pistols. And now the CT side, it's looking pretty weak. They're doing all this work, Henry, without Centaurus. It's true. He arrives. Yeah, you're right. It's a really good point. Like, that's the difference right now. That's what's going to make it. What's the tactical timeout? Got to bring to the table here for Na'Vi. As mentioned, they save plenty of weapons. That's not an issue. Money is absolutely fine. It's Madger, though, who's really causing the problems out there. 15 kills, 11 deaths. In terms of the opening, kills on Alexi B. He's won three direct duels against him. Very important rounds. Na'Vi pretty much fully invested here. Imam have found much success towards the top of middle, trying to slow them down for the incendiary. This time AK in hand, can't find the opening shot. Zantara is on the other side, good flashbang. He knows there's a chance! The spray down is perfect. Opening frag found. Space given over. And they can reset the round here. They just want to make sure they maintain a five on four situation. Smoke down towards connector. Magic working through the underpass position. Alexi B going to try and get some damage inflicted here. Pops the smoke open. No one to be seen on the other side. Magic going to sneak through the smoke here. Gain control of the window room. Oh, and he's going to win that fight. Alexi able to pick it up. And look at how many people they've got here. They have the AWP in the B hallway, so they can rotate three people to the A bomb side. They're doing what you wanted to turn the fire to do in the oh, first half. Oh, 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 yeah. What a cracking headshot. Yeah. Taking down one, and he's going to get more. A second kill. A shale goes down and bit inside of the bomb side alone. They're all coming for him. He's locked in here. He needs the backup. Oh, it's right through the wall. Wonderful. He finds another kill. Is it going to be enough, though, and is the bomb to be planted? Two versus one is Woxic and Mercadia, who's on an absolute tear right now. Leg shop. Wonderful down to half HP here. Still has somewhat of a chance at the USP after he flashes himself. I think he has to give in. He has to yield as eternal fire. We'll find yet another round. They close the gap down to just one round here. Wonderful will save his AWP. The tactical timer does nothing for them. And Mercadia getting stronger and stronger as the rounds go by. He's now the top fragger, up to 16 kills. Wonderful, we'll have to sit back and wait for his moment to strike. He hit a banger, but it's nowhere near enough. Eternal Fire now looking to close this game out. Take their opponents, pick a Mirage. After a desperate first half, down nine to three. A resurgence. Oh, look at this. This is right in front of the stage. A little Turkish corner that's building down there. And they are fired up right now. And I guarantee you they can hear this in Istanbul as well. And in Ankara, they are listening in right now. I guarantee it. The dreams of an entire nation here on the stage in Copenhagen tonight. And they are building this game back up again. They look like they were defeated in that first half. They looked absolutely oh. horrible. But Madger leading from the front. One of the most veteran players we have in the major still. Here we go, and he's looking for the knockout punch. A execution off the bat. It's going to be bit to try and defend here. M4 in hand, they're scrambling back to the bombs. They've got to play in front of the utility this time. And here comes Eternal Fire flooding out of the palace. And it's Antares finding the hat trick. Finally, he arrives on the server. And what a stunning sequence it is. Three kills found, round over. We tie things up 10 10. They call him the Turkish Terminator, and you just then saw why. What a mind-bending way to enter a bomb site. Yeah, he's he here. He spotted bit. He didn't even fire the gun. He said, I know you have to peek again. I know you're going to stand up, and I will blow your head straight off. They've wow. tied the game 10 to 10. He said as Antares arrived, it could be in a lot of trouble. It's wonderful, cowering at the back of the B-bomb side now. I'm not sure he can hold on to this one. Misses the shot, Wakadia takes him down, and they've done it. Tying things up at 10-10. It seemed like they was done. It seemed like they were down. But Eternal Fire kept on fighting this second half, winning the pistol. Just needed Zantares to arrive, and God, does he ever. 
What a brutal spray down from the Palace. As we get into round number 21, Anders, Narby starting to shrink now. They'll have pistols pretty much across the board. Emma bravely purchases the hero M4A1S. Makadi up. Have a chance of an opening kill. Converted. It's the CZ that will elude him in the end, but still, the all important rifle removed early. Wonderful waiting in towards this window position, perched up on the cinder blocks. Now we don't know if there's anyone else down there. They, they smoke it off. D oh! That is sick. Put some whipped cream on top, Henry, and call that the dessert eagle because he just took down two kills. That was so sweet. Kalix and Watsig left. If this is how it ends for Eternal Fire, if this is what tips the scale back for Na'Vi, that is too much to handle. Oh, my days. In the most unlikely rounds, Na'Vi have found some footing here on the CT side. Wonderful. Find his 25th frag. Gonna be Kalix though, backstabbing towards the B bomb site. Damage done towards the A side. Do not go down here, Woxing. The bomb is on his back. Needs to try and clamber in towards the B bomb site, which he will do. So the smoke down buys him a little bit of time. The backstab from JL in towards the palace position, but we have got Kalix ready and waiting. Seals the deal. Bits with a fighting chance here. He has got HP to work with and Kevlar. I think if not for the roaring of the crowd, both Kalix and JL would have heard each other and it would have been a different outcome here. But now Bit sneaking in. Looking to clutch this one, it could be everything for Na'Vi! He gets the first one, he surely must know where Kalix is. He does. Okay, 10 seconds. How do you even do this one, Kalix? Deep breath. Trust in the fact that he's not going to be going for a straight 10 second defuse, and that should be the round. Bit had one chance here. It's a great attempt, it's a really, really nice attempt. But it's not going to be quite enough eternal fire. After a nine to three half, they're now back in the lead. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Bit survives with just one point of health. But it will be eternal fire. Course correcting. After wonderful, did everything he possibly could from that window position. It looked like Zantara has had his number all day long. First shot's a banger, second it's sensational, and still it's not quite enough. Kalix making his way through the murder hole and causes absolute destruction in the B bomb site. 11 to 10. That was the partial buy from Narby. They'll take that third and final tactical timeout here. It's their map pick. Things were looking so good. A foregone conclusion we assumed after the first half. 9 3 on their T side campaign. But that's the lead gone. Eternal fire. One round away from map point here. And in terms of the overall buy, should be absolutely fine here for Narby. You can see they've got the kits. Well, this is. WP as well. We had the conversation a lot on the Eternal Fire side of things, but now it's wonderful. He's so far ahead. Where are the rest of them? Sure, Bit is up there. He had some cracking entries on the first half, but they need the rest of the squad right now. Yeah, Alexi B, 6 and 14, statistically speaking, was the lowest ranked player in the elimination stage. 0.8 rating. Uh, you thought he would start doing some serious work here in the quarterfinals. It's been a bit of a struggle for him. Wonderful, aggressive towards the underparts. Four players on the B side of the map once again. They have got Madja, similar approach to what Nabi presenting in that first half, controlling middle, making sure no backstabs come through. And it looks like it'll peel off. Not fancying the initial execution here that's been tried and tested. It's worked out for them so many times, maybe just a B split. Get that smoke down towards connector in the window room. Walks it with the AWP. Cardia. Getting that smoke down towards window. They still don't have mid control. We're under a minute. I'm not saying we have to get worried yet, but this is a much, much slower round out of the Turkish side than what we've seen before. Okay. Nice test. And Ima, he'll call it out saying, yeah, that was the orbit top mid right now. 45 seconds, Henry. It looks like we're going to have another B finish. Oh, yes, indeed. It looks indeed. like there's going to be tested again for Alexi. Like you said, he's been struggling on the scoreboard. Now is his time to really make up for that. JL, same for him, he's back for it, but Centaris with a headshot, and Alexi's feet are on fire, has to run out of that corner, 24 seconds now, Kalix with a headshot, 
should be enough, at least for the bomb part. Oh, what a Molotov from Walksick as well. Buys on a lot of space. Huge miss from Wonderful. I don't think they can justify going with this retake anymore. Against all the odds, Eternal Fire have found map point on Na'Vi's pick, recovering a 9-3 deficit. What a recovery of a game here. Showing fantastic mental fortitude. Na'Vi will have no choice but to save. Two rifles in the AWP. If Wonderful hits that shot, maybe there's something to be said about the retake, but no. It skims past the remaining Eternal Fire players. Map point, two opportunities to close out the map. We go 12 to 10. Huge. What a great call once again there from Madja. They were going for that initial B execution, but didn't feel it was quite the correct approach there. Back towards that mid control, slow utility. Perfect trade. And Zantara is hitting the money shot towards short. J.O. had a chance to get multiple kills there, but completely shut down by the Terminator himself. You know, this is following the classic script, or it would have been. You're the dark horse of the tournament. You go deeper than you've ever done before. And then you fall in the quarterfinals. That happens a lot. That's how it was playing out. But somehow they've changed the script. They're back online now. And they need but one more round. This would be a shocking comeback. I don't know if Navi have it in him to recover that one. This is Navi's map pick. Home ground for them. This is where they wanted to battle the Turks. Centaurus, another good entry, but they have to make it past Wonderful, and that has proven almost impossible for now. Wow, it's a neutralizing kill. Brings us back to the four and four. He gets a reload in, holding towards CT spawn, but he can't stop the unstoppable force of Kalix. He makes his way through the AK-47. Bomb should be planted now. A four versus three. Is this where Eternal Fire Fine victory on Mirage. It looks so good for them. Backstab towards Vigil. Magic has been such a nuisance for Alexi B. Spotted. This is the frag who decided all. Oh, Alexi B finds him. Yeah, he had to win that one with Kalix. He's going to get wonderful. The star player of Na'Vi down and out. And JL, he missed the first one. He won't miss the second one. A wide swing to shut it down. JL activated once again. All on Waxi. A bullet might do it, but it's going to be a quick return. They do have a kick, but they're going to go for the long defuse, and they should have the time for it as well. Oh, oh keeping the dream alive. It's really close there. As I mentioned, Alexi B, if Magia finds that kill top of middle, That's it's done. It. It's over. Alexi B with the presence of mind to check it. Been a great battle to follow. The two in-game leaders locking horns time and time again. And finally, Navi break the streak. Overtime looking very likely here. Can they find this round to close it all out? They'll use that third and final tactical timeout as we get into round number 24, Anders. A game that looked like it was done, that wasn't going to deliver. They kick off this quarter final, but my God, has it ever come to life? It had never looked more over than in the end of that first half. They were so deflated. It was really just Madger out there trying to wake up his team trying to do whatever he can, and he did it. It actually worked. So what's the call here from Magia? There's been some stunning calls from both in-game leaders on that T-side campaign. A lot of set pieces, a lot of five-man attacks. And this is more of a default approach this time. Smokes down towards middle. See Zantarez there with the AK-47 looking to battle it out once again. First kill goes in favor Ooh. of J.O. and Bits. Overtime now, presumably locked in as we enter a five versus three. Plenty of time on the clock here, but so much to do. It's walks up with the AWP. Kalex and Magic will join him. They've got zero positional control. The bomb's there towards Palace. Magic can't really go for the pick. If he dies, the round is well and truly over. Now we trying to catch this game right at the end. It looks like they might have done enough, at least. Get this into overtime now. Five on three, eternal fire. Hoping for a miracle. I'm sure they do not want to play overtime. Jail around the corner, walks it. He's got the advantage. No and they'll take him down. That's a good shot. We need about two or three more of those before this round is back on. The bomb in Palace. We know where this is going to finish, but the road there is a little bit long. That's a nice smoke. It actually pulls the CT over as well. Wonderful has played so well. 
Perfect position to find his kill on Callis, but it'd be picked by Woksik and a whistle past both of them. Madja out of the palace, found by Bits. Overtime now. As we enter the four versus two, 25 seconds remaining. They have no utility left on the T side. Scrambling to find kills here. I don't think there's anything that they can do about this scenario. Woksik did well to find the only pick, realizing it's the final round. Great shot landing, but there's nothing to do. Nothing to say about this one. 10 seconds remaining, no way to plant the bomb. This is just for padding stats. Nothing more will be found, and we're going to overtime. Catching the game right at the tail end. About to suffer one of the most brutal comebacks for Na'Vi there, but instead, they wake up just when they needed to. Now I want to see some more people help out Bit and Wonderful. Those two players need some backup from the rest of the squad. And Imma is showing some pretty good form in this last round, but it has to continue that way. All tied up. And we are at, at overtime, ladies and gentlemen. First <laughs> 16. Yeah, let's get it. A different approach yet. Eternal fire. Remain on the T side, you can see they're bombarding middle with utility. Four players behind it as well, trying to get themselves quickly up towards Shaw. JL has been a bit of a nuisance for them here in this position. Always seems good for one frag. Zantares close lines him this time, opens things up, and Wakadi has found some space towards the A bomb side, converts the shop, and now it's down to Alexi B. Finally showing some formula on the B bomb side. It could be enough to recover the round. Kalix goes down and walks it. Surely nothing that can be done. After losing the first two picks, Alexi B to save the day from the bench. As Na'Vi go 1-0 to kick off overtime here on Mirage. What a time for Alexi to find his form again. Yeah, he needed that. We know he can do it. We know he's got it in him. It's a very, very stressful game for him so far. He did amazing calling on the opening half. They didn't really need him to get the kills. But now here towards the overtime. Now they need him. They need the mechanical skill as much as they can get here on the Navi side. And they win the first one. The crowd are on their side. I can tell you at home, every single time there's a Navi kill happening here, you can feel it. The whole stage shakes. And let's just see Eternal Fire looking for another rapid A execute. Yep, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle up. Smokes down towards CT Spawn. They're focusing on the palace position this time. Maja. Leaves some utility for Santares. He's been playing like an absolute beast in this palace position. Can he find yet another hat trick? As they set up the initial smokes, time is of the essence and wonderful. Sudden to drop off in form. He's been on 26 kills for some time. Smoke will take away his vision. Here comes a full commitment from Eternal Fire. Hiding inside, Ricardia, it's a good shot, but Emma trying to create it back, it's not going to be possible. They go in one by one by one on the Na'Vi side, and they get pummeled trying to enter. Ricardia just at the edge, but it does not look like JL has any idea. They are going to be caught with their pants down. Ricardia, a double kill for the round is plenty enough here. Eternal Fire, they're going to take 13. They certainly are, they've got a double orb set up on the T side of Mirage here. Imagine making it work as well. Huge frag found, bomb planted, and it's JL thrust into a clutch. He's got to go for it, but Woksik, it's a couple of very, very important frags there. We're tying things up at 1 1. Final round here in the T side campaign for Eternal Fire and Overtime. I assume they'll throw the secondary orb away, keep it as an option, I suppose. But Wicardi up and Woksik working in tandem to find very important kills here. Imagine with that. Solo orb frag as well, with the double orb set up on the T side here. We'll see if Na'Vi can take the lead. As we close things out on their CT side, Woksik probing towards B once again, another 4-1 setup. Zendry down, courtesy of Alexi B. Again, I wonder if he would have heard the scope. He was quite close by. Very hard to know in this kind of an environment how much you can actually hear, but... He certainly Molotov then smoked it off, and it looks like thinking about going for a bit of a boost, but yeah, he's definitely guessing it. considering it. Slow and steady so far from Eternal Fire here in the final round. Yeah, look at Madger making noise on the A ramp. He's been so good at this. He holds these three players 
towards the A side of the map time and time again. Alexi B not taking the bait this time. He spots everyone. JL in a prime position to get a multiple spray down here. Find that first kill as Alexi B repositioned. They've locked him in towards the B apartments. Ooh, the shots are not missing. I don't know what's happening. There we go. They're going to reset the round. Yeah, they have to, but is that even possible at this late stage? 50 seconds on the clock. You're kind of beaten up. You spent a lot of your utility. And now you have to go back and try and get some mid control. I don't know about this one. Madja, if you can win this fight against Wonderful, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say the round is back on, but boost on the other side. All right, he's going to give it almost a freebie there. Yeah. Alexi getting boosted up and getting taken down. Big 25 nade. seconds. They're back towards the site. And you're right, a grenade to slow them down. Madja doing whatever he can for his team, but I think they've run out of time here. What's it going to get down? And the bombers at the back of the site. I don't think Magic can find these kills. He's had some amazing shots in this particular round, but you're right. He's running out of time and indeed space. Leap through the window, but it's Na'Vi holding on. A full round reset required after they were locked out of the B bomb site. This time, Alexi B jumps for information, spots all four of them, and is able to hold them at bay. So much damage taken on Root. They had to fall back towards middle, and you have to say, Anders, a great recovery from Maja, who seems to hit absolutely every shot presented to him right now. It wasn't quite enough there. The round reset cost him so much time, and he couldn't even attempt the clutch here. Bear in mind, you get one extra timeout once you enter overtime at this stage, and Na'Vi are opting to use it right now. They've got a 2-1 lead. Uh, first to 16, of course, as you mentioned, 15-15. We do it all over again. It's going to be a turn of fire with a different setup. The double off once again, this time on the, C this time on the CT side, Woxic and Maja, uh, enabling them to have that B turret, which has been a problem. Maja was getting focused in the back of the B bomb side time and time again. He wants to be able to fend them off and get the opening kill and make sure they can't just run riots on that side of the map. Man, I would say this is also a risky play, though, because... Some of, some of that worked very well for Na'Vi were those fast A executes. And the huge downside to playing double AWP is when you have to retake with them. I... It's making me nervous, to say the least. But we're going to find out how this one plays out. Second half of overtime is live. The Woxic getting denied any vision in the middle. No real surprise there. Looked like... Oh, he's trying to run through. That's a lot of aggression from Bit. Is he still going to keep going for this? He seems like he's just ready to jump. How sick would that have been if he'd actually kept going? But yeah, he's going to fall back behind the smoke. Wow. Zantara is here. This round a little bit more subdued, but not for long, and It's going to be Zantara as aggressive, of course, top of middle. Ima fighting for his life here. It's a scrappy spray. He'll at least get one for his trouble. But it will be Bith now fighting towards that B bomb site. Back and forth we go, JL. Amazing shots in towards the B bomb side. The two versus one with wonderful, very low. JL is going to have to do the heavy lifting of this stage. Oh. The bomb's back in T spawn, though. Oh, oh that's rough. You're right. Chaotic that's round. Alex sneaking up alone. I think you're on to something. Chaos definitely entering the arena at this late stage. He's got the knife out. He knows they're going to be coming for a good walk sick. Some good communication. I'm going to, I'm going to hold this line. They might get the bomb plant, but at least we're going to have a bit of a flank going in. And now we are. Look at how nervous they are. That bomb site is so suspiciously empty. You have to be wondering what else is going on. He's looking straight at it. Smoke goes up, and it could have been better timed. That might have saved Wonderful here, at least for a second. Although Kalix, he's dreaming about this one. It's right below as he gets the kill. And now Jail alone, and the pressure is on. They're pushing in from either side, and he knows and has to push forward. It's a strong headshot here. He needs one more, and walks six on the other side. JL, can he? Oh, oh, no! He can! They're at 15, and they've almost got the game. That round is so difficult to call. It came down to raw skill. Back and forth, we went towards middle. As the Titans started the lock horns, and JL delivering the goods to the B bomb site. Beautiful shots, great movement and fantastic awareness time and time again up against Wox. You got the AWP in the clutch. Zantares knows that's a significant round. That's now map points for Na'Vi and bear in mind eternal fire at that 12-10 lead. It was all down to that kill, top of middle. If Alexi B was found, if Maja gets that frag, which objectively was on a plate for him, he actually overlooked the angle, fell back as a misspray. Yeah. We would be on map two already.
it'd already be over. And now they're yes. looking down the barrel of having to chase double overtime here. Bear in mind it was a recovered game. Eternal Fire looked like they were done for after the first half. Their CC campaign yielded three rounds after posting the pistol victory and a 2-0 start. But the way they got back into this, to come crumbling down in overtime would be such a gut punch, but that might be the outcome here. As we go 15 to 13, Eternal Fire we need two rounds in a row, and it all starts with a pretty weak buy. Madges down to the MP9. Incendiary top of middle, and this time finally a default. Haven't seen many of these today, and it's all been about the, the four ones, the set pieces. But it's now a flat default across the map, waiting for the initial aggression, knowing they've got Eternal Fire on the ropes here. Alexi B up against Wakadia and Zantares. The gruesome twosome, and walks it to open things up. They've got the early advantage, and they'll hold on to it as well. Oh, but Alexi's still back oh! here. Oh! A clean headshot. Taking down Walks against Zantares. They were not expecting for there to be a second player at the top of mid. And this could be everything here. Jail, a little bit of a long range spray. It's going to be bit instead to pick it up. And suddenly, we're in a one versus two. This one oh, is for no. the map here. Madja, he carried his team the whole way through the map. But now he has to double and triple down oh, with one more time. He's in the worst possible position as well. Has no idea where they're heading. He can upgrade the MP9, sure. He'll find uh, an M4 on the ground. He's got a kid and a smoke. He's been playing fantastically well. He's in position to spot towards short here. Maybe he gets the timing, Anders. Ooh. Overlooks it. And now he really is on the back foot. They're going in towards the B side. He's got nothing to work with. Zero information. Couldn't really be further away if he tried. And in terms of residual utility on the T side, they have a nade and a flash. I guess the good news is there's no defensive utility like that. The smoke or the Molotov. So he will have time to at least rotate in towards B. But if there's any chance of him winning it, I'm not so sure. Here we go, he knows. And now he does. If he would have stuck in middle and waited for a second, maybe it could have happened here. Oh, he just runs in, ready to fight. Smoke up, flashing his way through. He knows fitness in the corner, but he can't no quite find him. There we go. What? AK's been picked up. Madjo, he's at 100% health here. Looking for Alexi in the back line. He's hunting for him. The captain of the team, but he's shut down. Alexi with the final kill here. Representing the land of a thousand legs, and we have just broken a thousand Turkish hearts here, winning in overtime on their map pick.